Matthew 22, Jesus says to love God and love others. So we take that literally and we apply it here in the third world slums that we live in. And we, there is a, our extreme needs in the children. We're meeting spiritual needs, health, medical needs, nutritional needs, emotional needs, educational needs. So what we do here is save children, we save kids. We are Hope House City. The honesty is too much And I have to close my eyes And hide I want to hold you till I die I originally came to the Philippines in 2003 I was a single father And uh, I was chatting with a college teacher And I came to visit her So when I, while I was here I just had no idea. Jesus loves you. That's why we're giving you sandwiches. Why? How are you guys? I just had never really seen that kind of poverty. I was very affected by it. You want a sandwich? Okay. Peanut butter sandwich. And I thought at the end about maybe I really need to come back to God now because I was just really, I, I knew then what I wanted to do and that was to come here and help the kids so that started in 2003 but it took it took me six more years to get my life unwrapped well and I was a single father I need to let my kids grow up bigger and uh, so then I, I came here in March of 2009 <laughs> I didn't know anything about the dynamics of third world poverty at all. And you, in fact, you have to live here a while to really... There are people that visit here in hotels. They have scuba diving here. There are, there are deep sea divers. Uh, people come here for various re all kinds of reasons. And they're here and don't see it. Because they're self-involved. They're involved with themselves. They see it, but they don't see it. I even had an American nurse here who said, I was pointing out some things to her, and she said, well, that's all they know, they're okay. Well, that's easy, you know, and I think some of it is, I think there's a, I think part of it is people just don't want to be responsible for it. They feel like they're not responsible for it, it's somebody else's problem and they just don't want to deal with, they don't want to deal with it. I think it's just easier to say, come up with an excuse why it's that way and they're off the hook. Maybe, I don't know, I really don't know. Or people are just really blind, maybe. Jesus said they have eyes and they don't see and ears that they don't hear and that applies to people in this. Because even myself, I, I'm not in a hotel. I was poor here for a year well, I'm still poor, but I'm okay. I mean, I'm not starving. But I went through it with them, and that's how, that's a, that's that's an eye opener. Wait a minute. There's no food bank. There's no place to apply for food stamps. The churches don't care. They really don't care. They're not going to help you. Nobody's going to help you. You are on your own. So that's where they, you know, where they say the rubber meets the road. Well, there's millions of people here living where the rubber meets the road every day. They're literally working just to eat. They, and if anything happens, bad, medical, they're just dead or sick. 
or crippled or, or, or impaired, it's, it's, they're not going to get help. It's not going to happen. I knew why I was coming here, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. It's really strange. I mean, I got on the plane in Seattle with just God, basically. I had surrendered to God in Seattle. But even though you surrender to God, you don't change overnight. I didn't really have the Bible in me. I mean, I grew up with it, but I didn't really, wasn't a mature Christian, certainly not. And I was just kind of surprised I was going to. I mean, what am I doing? I like, I thought I should be fearful because I knew it was a one-way ticket. I was just going to go one way. I wasn't going to take the return flight. I wasn't going to bail out no matter what. I made up my mind. If I just die, I just die. God spoke to me and said, you help the kids and I'll help you. Thank you.